all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. Let's examine problem 12, one, a, a make or buy decision. So in a make or buy decision, we're gonna be placed in a situation where we need to decide whether we should be making a product internally or purchasing it from an outside supplier, perhaps at a cheaper cost. And a lot of companies, this is like an outsourcing decision, right? Do you do the work yourself or do you get somebody else to do the work for you? Uh, so Carol's Cupcakes sells cupcakes and other desserts through its retail store. The company has always made all of its ingredients from scratch, but has recently been approached by a supplier that specializes in icing. Carol believes that the supplier's icing is of equal quality to her own, and that's important. If the supplier's icing was of lower quality, we wouldn't even consider it, but it's equal quality, uh, and believes their offer of $3 per liter may enable her to save money. So the supplier shows up with icing that's just as good as Carol's, and they say, look, it's three bucks a liter, and she thinks it costs me more than three to make it. Uh, Carol's evaluating her own costs, and she shows that, hey, look, it costs me four fifty if I want to make it. They're offering it to me for three bucks. So, you know, that's a savings of a dollar fifty per liter, and that's what she says. Examining the report, report, Carol says, their icing is just as good and it would save me a buck fifty a liter. And if she's making five thousand liters a year, that's seventy five hundred bucks. That's like enough to buy a pretty nice used car. Like that's real money. So you know, of course, you'd consider this if you were Carol. And that's exactly what she's going to do. Um, so it says, assuming there's no other use for the icing equipment or the space it uses in the kitchen, what is the net dollar advantage or disadvantage of accepting the supplier's offer? Well, to figure out this, we're going to need to figure out which of these costs are relevant to her decision and which are not relevant to her decision. When I answer this type of question, I always like to lay it out in sort of two columns. So one for make and one for buy, because we're doing make versus buy. So if we make the product, we're gonna need to have direct materials for the product, like sugar or food coloring, whatever else goes into icing. I'm not really sure, I'm not a cook, but I would think sugar and food coloring would. If we buy the product, we don't need to have sugar and food coloring for the icing, right? We might have sugar and food coloring because we're a bakery and we use it for other things, but we're not going to be needing to buy the, the sugar and food coloring we were previously using in icing. So it is different between the alternatives. Our sugar and food coloring icing, food coloring costs will change. Um, between the alternatives. So it is different and it's not sunk yet. It's not like we've already bought a million. If, if she already owned like uh, a year's supply worth of sugar and icing, perhaps that would change sugar and uh, food coloring, you know, the, the direct materials that might change her decision. But let's assume that she's, you know, has just a reasonably small amount of inventory that she can work through relatively quickly, in which case uh, it's not different and it's not sunk. It is a relevant cost. So if I make, it costs me $1 in direct materials. If buy, it costs me $0 in direct materials because I'm not going to buy any uh, sugar or food coloring for my icing because I'm just buying icing that's ready made. Direct labor, 50 cents is what direct labor costs me. Uh, if I make, and if I buy, I don't have to pay anybody to make icing, right? They're not spending a whatever it takes, you know, a half an hour to make a batch of icing. Uh, that's not happening any longer. Uh, variable manufacturing overhead was next on our list. Is that relevant or not? Well, I'll give you a little hint. Generally, when costs are variable, we do consider them to be relevant. Not, not every time, but that's a nice little rule of thumb. If you think, okay, look, if I'm going to sell more cupcakes, I'm going to incur more of these types of costs, these indirect costs, then absolutely they are uh, uh, relevant. So it's different between the alternatives and it is not uh, uh, sunk. So 25 cents, and if we buy, there's no variable overhead of producing icing. Fixed overhead traceable, and there's a little asterisk, and it says a dollar. It says 40% relates to uh, uh, cleaning and maintenance of icing equipment, so 40 cents. 
relates to cleaning of icing equipment. 60 cents, 60 percent, which 60 percent of a dollar is 60 cents. So 60 cents relates to the depreciation of icing equipment that has no resale value. Okay, so uh, this is fixed overhead. And when we say traceable, we mean that they can be traced directly to making icing. This is like icing related fixed overhead. Uh, so we gotta say, are either of these relevant? Well, let's start with the cleaning and maintenance of icing equipment. If I continue to make icing in house, if I continue to make icing, I'm gonna to have to keep cleaning and maintaining my icing equipment. I'm gonna to have to keep paying 40 cents per liter of, um, of icing. So absolutely this is relevant because again, I haven't, uh, uh, it's different between the alternatives. If I buy my icing externally, I don't have to clean and maintain my icing equipment because I'm not gonna need any icing equipment. Uh, if I make it, then yeah, so it's different between the alternatives. It's not sunk yet. Like I haven't made my next batch of, of icing yet and when i make it i'm gonna to have to clean and maintain the icing equipment so it's not sunk it's different it is relevant so that 40 cents is relevant let's see about the 60. uh 60 relates to depreciation of icing equipment with no resale value okay here's a key here if we're not able to sell this equipment we're just kind of stuck with it you might say well wait it's a it's a sunk cost, right? I've already purchased the equipment. And because I'm not able to sell it, I, I don't get any sort of relevant uh, revenues coming in. It's a sunk cost. It's, it's not going to be different between alternatives. This is not a relevant cost and shouldn't be considered in our analysis. So if I make the 40 cents, is absolutely a relevant cost. The the cleaning and maintaining the sixty cents of depreciation is not relevant. It's it's based on a sunk cost. I've already purchased this equipment. I'm going to depreciate it. Whether you know I'm not going to be able to sell it. I'm kind of stuck with it. Um, I could I could throw it away and take a big loss on the sale. But but I'm certainly not going to have any um, any gains from getting rid of it. So uh, the only relevant cost here is the forty cents. And if I buy, of course, I don't have to do any maintenance on my equipment. Uh, fixed overhead allocated. Okay, my fixed overhead allocated, a buck seventy-five. The word allocated. This means uh, that the it's a company cost that the icing is just getting its share of. So. You know, I always think of it like a department store, right? If I have a department store and there's four departments, one, two, three, four, right? And they're all the same size as squares in this department store. And my um, property taxes are $100,000. Well, I would charge each department 25 grand. I would say, look, your share of the property tax is 25K, your share is 25K your share is 25k and your share is 25k that's why i'm allocating the cost now let's say i drop department number three what happens to my property tax well it stays at 100 grand so uh even if i drop a department i still got to keep my allocated costs so even if we drop the icing department we still have to keep the allocated costs in the company meaning the allocated costs won't be different between our alternatives. So they're gonna be the same no matter what, fixed overhead allocated, we don't consider a relevant cost. So here are the relevant costs of her producing the icing herself. A buck, a buck 50, a buck 75, uh, $2.15 to make. And oh, I haven't done the relevant cost of buying, sorry. There's one more relevant cost I need to consider, which is the purchase price. Now, if I make, I'm not gonna purchase it, so it costs me zero. If I buy, it costs me $3. That's a very relevant cost. So our total relevant costs here, 150, 175, 215 to make, three bucks to buy. We are better off to make. We are 85 cents per liter better off to make than to buy. And at our expected uh, production level of 5,000 liters, 85 cents times 5,000 liters is 4,250, oh, not 2050, 
4,250 just times 5,000 liters were 4,250 dollars better off to make so what should we do we should make okay let's read on if the offer, so part B, kind of separate from A. So we've answered A, right? A, oops, I'm sorry, I'm looking on the wrong screen. Um, A says, assuming there's no other use for the icing equipment or the space, uh, what is the net advantage or disadvantage of accepting the supplier's offer? Well, we're 85 cents a liter better off to make than to buy, so I guess accepting the supplier's offer will put us 85 cents worse off and 42.50 worse off if we accept the supplier's offer overall. So that's answer for A. Our answer for B, let's have a look. Um, it says, if the offer is accepted, Carol's Cupcakes could use the space that had been previously used for making icing as a bacon frying space. Carol believes that the new bacon line of cupcakes would produce margins of $5,000 per year. Should Carol's Cupcakes accept the offer? Okay, so we got this full kitchen, and if we get rid of all of our icing equipment, we can get a hot plate and a frying pan, and we can do bacon. And uh, bacon and cupcakes is a hot thing uh, these days. And she thinks, look, it's going to make me some money. It's going to make me about five grand. Well, we just said, uh, if we... make we're 4250 better off but now we've just got this thing if we decide to buy the buy option just got five thousand dollars better right Th that's what this this is saying it's saying look if we accept the offer, we're allowed. We're able to use the space to to make bacon. Well, if we don't accept the offer, the implication is: look, we don't have room to make bacon in our kitchen. So the buy offer just got five thousand dollars better. Make now has what we would call an opportunity cost. We're giving up the chance to make this uh, bacon, and so because of that, it kind of swings our decision, right? If we make, we're forty two fifty better off. But this opportunity cost of buying means that if the buying option becomes $5,000 more attractive, now we'll be $750 better off to buy so again make was 4250 better off but even given the fact that we've got this little savings going on 85 cents a liter 4250 overall uh if the buy option gets five thousand dollars better well we are then 750 better off if we buy it swings the pendulum in the other direction we should buy our icing if we can use that space to do something else. Okay, folks, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for our next one.